Hello class, today we're gonna to talk about trend lines or what we call lines of best fit. This is one of the tools that we use in a scatter plot to help us make predictions. Now in class, we're going to do a data collection activity. Okay, and we're going to see if there is a correlation between height and shoe size. So we'll do that in class. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph it by hand, doing a scatter plot. And then we're also going to learn how to graph using the graphing calculator and how to create a scatter plot using the graphing calculator. So these are the steps that we're going to use. But in order to do that, we'll do that in class. Okay, so we will do a, an activity toward the end where we use the calculator and we can, we can look at that at another time. So the first thing we need to do is determine what a trend line is. Okay, so a trend line is, a, is on a scatter plot and it's drawn near the points that approximates the association between the data sets. So we use a trend line to help make predictions. So if you'll notice in this particular scatter plot that we have, that's referring to number of people and how much the people would cost, we've got a whole bunch of dots up there and there's a line that's drawn through the middle of them. This is what we call a line of best fit or a trend line. Now you'll notice that this particular line should be drawn as close as possible to each of the data points because it's kind of like an average. Okay, this is one of the main reasons why we look at mean absolute deviation, because this line algebraically is actually constructed where the mean absolute deviation of each of those points, that's the approximation of that. There should be about as many points above the line as below the line. So that's kind of an important thing. So if you'll notice right here, there's about as many below this line as there are above the line. And that's what we want. Now, one of the things that we use this trend line for is to help make predictions. So if you'll notice right here, it says estimate the cost for eight people. So you'll notice that the data doesn't go up to eight people, but our graph does hit at eight people. So what we do is we use this, this line to help us make a prediction as to where eight people would be and eight people would cost approximately $50. And that's what a trend line is used for, to help make predictions. So let's go through a couple of these and find out which one do you think would be the best trend line. Okay, so in this particular data, you'll notice the data is generally going downhill. So would this line be an, a good approximation? No, all it does is connect these two points here that are called outliers. They kind of pull or sway the data one direction or the other. Okay, what about this one right here? Okay, well, we've got a few points on the left of the line and a bunch over here on the right, but would that be, is that the general direction of our, our data? No, this is actually the general direction. So that line right there would be the best approximation or best line of best fit. What about in this graph? Okay, so this graph, it's a little bit tougher to tell. But would we use this one right here that just connects those two dots? No, because that's not the general direction of our data. What about this one? Would that one be a good one? Well, it's not bad. It hits quite a few of the points, but there's not very many points down below it. So believe it or not, this is actually the best line of best fit. Even though there's a bunch of dots down below the line, this one dot right here kind of pulls the graph and the data that direction. Okay, so that would be the actual best line of best fit in this particular scenario. Now, one of the things that we do with lines of best fit is we have to create that line of best fit. And the only way we can do that is to create an equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna learn the process that we use in order to create the equation of the line of best fit that goes through a scatter point or scatter plot. So the first thing that we have to do, step number one, is we have to identify two points on the trend line. And these two points need to be some particular ones. They need to be toward the middle of the data, one at the beginning of the data and one at the end of the data. So you'll notice in this scatter plot, they already chose those two points for us, this point and this point, and they've identified those coordinates for us. Now, what we're gonna try to do is we're gonna use those two points to create the equation of the line in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. Well, we know that we can find the M by using the formula Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. And that's what we use whenever we are given two points. Now, if you remember the lessons that we did on slope when we were using this formula, I had you do a process. The first thing that we did was we labeled our points with one and two. 
And then that told us that in the one coordinate, that's going to be x1, y1. And in the two coordinate, that's going to be our x2, y2. And now all we do is we plug in those values in order to find our slope. So our y2 is 40. Our y1 is 20. Our x2 is 6. And our x1 is 2. And now we just do the math. 40 minus 20 is 20. 6 minus 2 is 4. We simplify that to 5. So our slope is 5. So in the equation, we have y is equal to the m. I can now substitute a 5 for that. And now what we need is to solve for b. Well, if you remember what we did in order to solve for b was we took one of our coordinates and we plugged in the x and y values and we solve for b. So I'm going to take this first coordinate, the 22, I mean the 220, sorry, and I'm going to plug those in for the x and the y. So my y is my 20, and my x is the 2. I'm going to evaluate that and solve for b. So we end up with 20 is equal to 10 plus b. Now I need to move this 10 to the other side, so I subtract 10 from both sides, and we end up with b is equal to 10. So we end up with the equation of y is equal to 5x plus 10. And that's how we find the equation of the line that passes through the center of that scatter plot. Now, we can use that equation now to help us make some predictions. So here's some questions that we'll answer using that equation. You'll notice they came up with the same equation that we came up with. So it says, use the equation of the trend line to help make predictions. What would the cost of 10 people be? Okay, well, on the graph, I can actually go all the way up to 10 people because it's right here. Okay, so what would the cost of 10 people be? It would be $60. Just like that. So we can use that trend line to help us determine the cost. But this next one says, what's the cost of 20 people? Well, 20 is going to be way out here somewhere. There's no way I can make that prediction. So one of the things I can do is I can just plug in the number of people into the X because my number of people is my X coordinate. So all I have to do is use that formula, Y is equal to five times, and then I plug my 20 in for my X plus 10. So we end up with Y is equal to, well, five times 20 is 100 plus 10. So my cost would be $110 for 20 people. That's all we have to do. Now this next one says, what would the cost, or how many people will it cost for $150? Well, if people is my X value, the cost is my Y value. So I could take this 150, I could plug it into the Y value, and just solve for X. So I get rid of this 10 first, end up with 140 is equal to 5X. Then I divide both sides by 5, and I end up with x is equal to, well, 5 goes into 14 two times, with 4 left over, 5 goes into 40 eight times, so we end up with 28 people will cost $150. And that's all there is to that. So that's how we can use the equation of that trend line. We can use it to help us make predictions. So let's see if you can do one. Or let's see if we can do another one. Not do one by yourself, but let's see if we can do another one. So here is a scatter plot. Here's a trend line that's already drawn for us. They chose this point right here and this point right here. And again, we want to point at the beginning of our data and at the end of the data. And if I were to connect those two points, I'm going to end up with a line that goes through the middle of all the rest of the points. Okay, so what we need to do is identify those points. So this coordinate up here is going to be 10. 95. This coordinate down here is going to be 60 and 40. Okay, so now we're going to create the equation of the line in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. To find our slope, we're going to use the formula y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Okay, so now that we have our coordinates identified, I'm going to label this top one as 1, this bottom one as 2, so this becomes x1, y1, x2, y2. 
and I'm going to calculate slope. Okay, now we know that since the graph is going downhill, I'm going to have a negative slope. So my y2 is 40 minus my y1 is 95 over 60 minus 10. So 40 minus 95 gives me negative 55, and 60 minus 10 gives me negative 50, I mean, gives me positive 50. So now what we have to do is simplify that. So if I divide both of those by 5, I end up with negative 11 over 10, and that's my slope value. So in my equation, y is equal to negative 11 tenths x plus b. Now we need to solve for our b. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to select one of my coordinates. I'm going to select coordinate number 2. I'm going to plug in my x and my y values. <clears throat> You'll understand why I chose that in just a few moments. So my 40, I'm going to plug into my y. My 60, I'm going to plug into the x, and I'm going to solve for b. So the first thing I need to do is I need to simplify that, e that part right there. So I know since my 10 is on bottom and my 60 is on top, I can simplify the 60 and the 10. And they both have a 10 in common, so this one's going to be a, turn into a 6. So I end up with 40 is equal to negative 11 times 6, which is negative 66 plus B. Now I need to get rid of that negative 66 by adding 66 to both sides. And I end up with B equaling 106. So that gives me the equation of... Y is equal to uh, negative 11 tenths X plus 106. Now, that's my equation. Now, is that the correct equation? Well, let's see. In order to check that, I'm going to bring up my calculator. Well, I thought I was going to. There we go. Now it's working. Bring up my calculator. We're going to see if this will work. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type this equation into my calculator. So I'm going to do parenthesis negative 11 divided by 10 x plus 106. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my window so my graph will work. And now I've already changed my window to match this graph. So now all I have to do is hit graph, and you should see that exact same line show up on the graph, and it does. And okay, now another thing we can look to in our t-chart, because on the calculator there is a t-chart, to see if those coordinates are there. So I can come up here to table. Now I've already selected one. I've already got it to where it's there. Here's 60, 40, right there. If we wanted to look for the other one, there is the 1095. So that equation is correct and that's how we do that so that's how we create an equation of a line of best fit and what i'm going to have you do is a couple of questions similar to that for your assignment so here's the first question that i'm going to give you for your assignment so using this scatter plot i want you to answer these questions and then here's the second one where you're actually having to create it and find the equation of the line of best fit so until next time i'll talk to you later